Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic, here with another Let's Do a Brew podcast. Before we get to today's guest and today's topic, I want to remind everyone that we've just launched our Patreon. You can find us at patreon.com slash cmdrmechanic. Your support helps make our show bigger and better. More guests, more episodes, and more things to do. Do check us out. On today's show, we're joined by Jeremy Knoll. Jeremy, thank you for coming out and spending some time with us today. Uh, Our audience might know you best from Star City Games Commander Versus or your own personal stream. Uh, Once again, thank you for coming out. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, so, uh, so again, our, our audience might know you best from the SCG Commander Versus show. Mm-hmm. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that and how we can see some more? Sure. Uh, so Commander Versus is a weekly, most weeks, uh, program that we play four-player commander. Uh, it's myself, Justin Parnell, John Suarez, and Stephen Green, and has been for quite a few years now. Uh, we're currently in our 20th season right now. Uh, we do about four seasons a year. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of fun with that. Um, You can find that on the Star City Games YouTube channel. Uh, I also play Paper Commander online on my Twitch channel. Uh, It's twitch.tv slash Jeremy Knoll. And I play right now about twice a week, Mondays and Saturdays is my current days. Um, I also play with Olivia Gobert Hicks on my stream a lot, and she plays on her own channel, which is uh, twitch.tv slash Affinity Artifacts. She actually helped me helped bring me back into streaming on my own channel again. Um, so she started doing the, uh, the paper commander on the uh, on on Twitch and got me into it. And then that made me want to restart my own stream again. So that's amazing. That's amazing. And, and there there's really a contrast between playing for commander versus and playing on your own streams, right? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Uh, I know that on uh, commander versus you've got themes that come up every week and you're building a new deck every week. Uh, We we're often told in the format that the restrictions that we have, the deck building restrictions that we have in commander lead to a lot of creativity. The extra layer of restrictions and deck building restrictions, does that really let you flex your muscle when it comes to commander in the format? Uh, yeah, it can for sure. Um, so we generally sit down the four of us and director Kyle, uh, a couple of weeks ahead of time, sometimes several months ahead of time, uh, and plan out our next season and say, okay, this is roughly how many we're going to have. And a lot of it falls around what the schedule is going to look like, um, previous to, you know, pre COVID world. Uh, it was always like, who's going to what shows, when are people taking vacations, Mm -hmm. things like that, that we had to work around. Um, nowadays it's just kind of a, all right, well, where do we want to plan our break? Do we want to get this new set in? Is there going to be delays in product, stuff like that? And so we sit down and we say, okay, we do about eight to 10 episodes a season and say, okay, here are the themes we want to cover. We generally try and do a couple things. We always do our fan request video at the very end. Uh, we try and do two random episodes per season and we usually come up with a theme for those. Uh, we usually have a budget episode of some sort if that means you know we're going to limit ourselves to a specific budget if we decide to just play pre-cons is usually one of our budget episodes uh if and then we also have like our wild formats where we do like every card has to be a bulk rare or something like that outside of basic lands so we we always sit down and we come up with those and we try and come up with new ones um We've come up with like a pretty exhaustive list at this point with having 20 seasons of different various ideas of where we can stretch this. Um, So for examples, in the past, uh, we actually did an episode where we did partner commanders like eight months before they released that product. Yes, I recall. um, Which was a lot of fun to see. Uh, We have also did, um, there was another really big one. We've done like Planeswalkers commanders before that became an official thing. Yes. Uh, Things of that nature. So we always try and come up with these new ways that you can play. Mm -hmm. And um, they do change your deck building quite a bit. So like if you're playing with any of the pre-con commanders that are a Planeswalker as commander, you definitely have those different restrictions. Like, oh, I can play more of this type of spell. I can like limit the amount of creatures I'm playing because I'm playing a Planeswalker and I can play a lot more 
board wipes, creature wipes, you know, and not have to worry about it as much. Yeah, that, so. that's fantastic. And, and that kind of thing leads to a lot of creativity. Uh, and I know that I've seen some really out there themes on the channel as well. Uh, we, we've seen the uh, the chair theme deck, yeah. uh, most famously, <laughs> yeah. which, uh, which definitely turned out to be a fan favorite. Yeah, there's that was part of one of our random series. And we've definitely had a couple of like that where uh, our traditional random episodes are each player puts two decks into the pot and then we spin to see who randomly has to play it. So it's become kind of a gimmick now that like each of us puts in one kind of okay deck and then one kind of gimmicky deck. Right. Um, and the chair theme was uh, the chair tr uh, tribal is kind of where that uh, one of the things that started that off. We've also had things like beard tribal, um, ladies looking left, you know, yes. things of that nature where you're really using the artwork and it really causes you to like look at a lot more cards than you usually would and cards that are outside of like the standard staples or even cards you may have never heard of. Right. And just to find like, oh, this one specific card has a, you know, female presenting character looking to the left or, you know, this has a character with a beard on it, you know, things like that. Just right. to make sure you're keeping within that thing. So yeah, and that kind of thing is fantastic in my opinion. Uh, I I love the kind of self-imposed restrictions on deck building. It's a big departure from when you get to build a deck for yourself, where you're often looking to build around one thing in particular or a commander in particular, and you've got control of that. I guess the trade-off is that you only have to play a deck on commander versus once as opposed to your personal deck which you really gain that familiarity with and you build and tweak and tune and it becomes like a child to you uh i, I know that you've got a rather famous or infamous personal deck in the villainous wealth deck uh yeah <laughs> why don't you you tell the audience a little bit about that uh yeah so when that card came out when villainous wealth came out I saw it and like, I always liked uh, big dumb spells and uh, the idea of basically a reverse Genesis wave, a, like I've always really liked Genesis wave. I played it in standard when I was, uh, you know, on the, like the PTQ grind way back. And um, so like the idea of, okay, well I can play your deck. So I'm at the mercy of whatever your cards are. Right. was always really fun to me. And I played it, uh, you know, I, it was like probably a couple of, weeks before before I decided, okay, this is, I'm going to build a, a commander deck around this. At first, I was like, I want to build a standard deck. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time I played standard in years at that point. And I built like an elf ball style deck. And then after that, I was like, I got to build a commander deck around this. So right. and when I first started it off, um, I looked at uh, the different commanders that were salt high. And there weren't really a lot of options. There was Damia, there was uh, the El the dragon, the, pl the plane chaser, whatever, mm -hmm. planescape dragon. Um, and there were like one or two other ones. And they all, and Sidisi, I think was the other one, because that came out with that same set. And they all just didn't seem quite to fit where I wanted to go with the card. Right. Uh, because Damia was really, in Sultai was the like, okay, everybody's going to target you. You're going to be you're going to be public enemy number one in right. pod in that, in that, uh, just because of that commander. So the next set came out and Tassiger came out. And I was like, Oh, okay. This is really good because it has a built in recursion and it does what I want to do, which is get that card back, get Phil Misswell back into my hand and cast it again and cast exactly. it again. So I prefer not to play games where I'm trying to make infinite mana and really just go off and kill everyone at the same time. So. I built it so that it can generate a pretty decent amount of mana. Like I can definitely get to, you know, twenties and thirties pretty easily right. uh, after building up a little bit. But it's never going to be like, okay, I, you know, tap and on tap assault monolith infinite times and mill you out. That's just not fun to me. Right. The whole point is I'm stealing your cards so that I can play with them for a while. Exactly. And can you all deal with that? So right. Uh, and uh, I. I I believe I've seen that recently you've changed the commander to the new Zaxara the Exemplary. Yes, Zaxara is really good and I think that it works very, very well for uh, this style of deck. Just it, like when I saw it, I was like, oh, okay, they printed a commander for me. Yes, exactly. They printed a commander for Villainous Wolf as a card. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> just having the ability to make the the blockers, having death touch, adding extra mana, all of it. In. That that's exactly what I thought when I saw the card spoiled. Uh, is <laughs> they they made this for Jeremy? Like, yeah. did did they consult you to make no, that? <laughs> not even remotely. Uh, thankfully, that was our our preview card for or our preview deck for Commander Versus. Right. That was I was very happy that they that somebody up there probably was like, <laughs> I gotta I gotta make sure that this is the one for them. Jeremy has to be the one to to show this off, and that Zaxara was our preview card mm -hmm. for the actual deck as well. So yeah, uh, I, I we, know we, that we, you uh, you highlighted that in the preview video. Too, yeah, so. we, we made pretty good use of of that as our preview card with our fun little uh, video that we made with it. So oh, our preview that, video. That's fantastic. Uh, and um, I, I've also seen that you've really uh, taken a shining to some of the decks that you've built on Commander Versus and transitioned them to your personal deck lists as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, Tashar is one of them that you've spoken about in the past. Yeah, so Tashar was one where that was one of our themes where we were doing a budget theme and the budget for the entire deck was going to be $50. And we were like, okay, well, there's some pretty good stuff here and there. Um, I, I think most of us went with a monocolor deck or at most two color deck. It's really difficult to start building out and getting all those extra colors tr strains your mana base a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, so you really want to get as many basics in there as possible. So uh, I looked it up and Tashar was just a, it's a, an inexpensive build. Like you can build it super expensive. You can yes. put your um, your eggs style cards in your there. Your lion's eye really, diamonds in yeah, there you, for you, the your, your, your LEDs, salvager. your um, your mana crypts, your things like that. that you can really build up all your zero cost, uh, your mox, you know, opals and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can really build it up to be an expensive deck and then go off on turn three or four or whatever right. fairly easily. And it's just a combo deck. But I really liked the idea of here's a combo deck, but it's a six card combo that involves my commander and I have to draw all the cards and I'm not really running any, like I, I run um, Inventor's Fair as like the only real tutor. You know? Right. Not running like Enlightened Tutor in the deck or anything because again, it's... Uh, still kind of a budget build. I, I've built it up a little bit, and it's now a... Uh, oh, my puppy's trying to get my attention. Uh, so I built it up a little bit, and um, it's closer to like a $75 deck. Uh, so I had to put Smothering Tide in there. It's really of one of the few ways that it really can generate a lot of mana. Um, and it generates all those extra artifacts too. But uh, like I never put in uh, Clark Clan Ironworks or anything like that to really get it going. It's got... It's got Eshnod's Altar, which wasn't in the original $50 budget build, mm -hmm. uh, but really, really helps the deck to actually get the win if you can get that one. So, Absolutely. But that's and one of them. Uh, yeah, for sure. I, 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 love, uh, I love those kind of decks that are, uh, that are looking to assemble the Rube Goldberg machine, right? The, the five, six, seven cards, and it's just here, I, I get a repeatable action. Uh, and not even necessarily winning the game, but getting you that repeated value. I've um, definitely done that where it's people have people have been like, hey, what are you doing over there? Oh, I'm just I'm I'm playing solitaire for 10 minutes and then <laughs> I pass the turn and they're like, what what did you do? I gained like seven life. <laughs> yeah, I, I drew three cards. I gained yeah. seven life. Yeah. No, no, not, not a big deal. Like there's also that's the deck that also has um, if you've played it against me or I, I think I've mentioned it a couple of times. I'm really good at drawing planes <laughs> in that deck. Yes. It's always, that's always seems to be what it is. It's like, okay, well, if I draw like maybe one or two cards, I can get myself out of this and it's planes <laughs> and it's planes and it's planes. So, right. So I'm not putting like land tax or anything in there again, because I'm trying to keep it budget ish. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so yeah, but that one's really fun. Another one that I actually recently, um, played on the channel because I wanted to build a personal deck out of it was Rael the Everwise. Yes. Which is another one that's got a, interesting theme to me i wanted to do it it's not all like wheels and deals it's not like a nekasar i'm just trying to wheel as many times as i can to make everybody discard and draw and i'm going to kill you with psychosis crawler and nekasar and stuff like that right. um it's really trying to put a bunch of instants and sorceries in the graveyard and then just punch you with rael right. as hard as it can uh so i've got I've got some fun stuff in there. It's got, um, you know, things that are going to make it unblockable, things that will buff it up a little bit. And um, 
And then things like Soul's Fire, which really kind of, you know, okay, well, I need to get that last bit of damage in and of Chromatic Punch and things like that. So, yeah, uh, um, I, I played a Riel deck on uh, Common Command, a gameplay channel recently. Uh, and I, I built it the same way that the entire goal of it is to punch with Rael. So uh, there's wonder in the deck, there's rogue passage, the ways to just get through and get in for combat damage. Uh, and on turn one, one of the players dropped a uh, Leyline of the Void on me. Oh, so no. <laughs> Riel had zero power, but I, I do play uh, Thassa's Oracle in it. Oh, I, okay. I don't play Laboratory Maniac or uh, Jace Wielder of Mysteries in it, but I do play Thassa's Oracle in it because I have just drawn the entire deck. Uh, and it, it's something that uh, is, is great to me where you build a deck around an action like drawing cards mm -hmm. uh, or like wheeling and your game plan is just I'm going to wheel until I can do something as opposed to I'm going to assemble a combo that's going to kill all of the players at the table. Yeah, uh, it, it's those kind of self-imposed restrictions that much like what you're doing on Commander Versus uh, really help breed creativity and get those weird kind of uh, deck building niches out of the woodwork too. Yeah. I I personally here on the channel take submissions from viewers for decks that they want to see tuned up, that they want advice for, and I see some really wild builds. And that's one of the things that I love about the format. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's one of the things that I get to is we do the, like I said, the fan submission every season and seeing some of the ones that people bring in, just like, this is my cat stack or whatever, you know, <laughs> or this is my... Uh, you know, this, this or that deck. Um, it, it really makes me like, uh, the, the most recent one that I played was a K and T lands deck, yes. which, you know, I've seen a lot of K and T decks and they're usually just kind of like group hug or they're, you know, they're trying to pillow fort or something like that. Mm -hmm. And just, this is, this is a lands deck. It's got, you know, more than your basic amount of lands. It's got your, um, uh, you know, your thespian stage, dark depths combo. It's got right. this, it's got that. And, like, okay, yeah, it's got Zeranor, it's got all that, it's got Crucible, it's trying to just play a bunch of lands, it's got some landfall stuff, and I'm like, that's a really cool take on it, I like it a lot, so I just, that's the one I picked for this season, so. For sure, and the fact that it's four colors helps a lot, too, Yeah, uh, because you normally see a lands deck be in Golgari or Jund or Simic, yeah. uh, but being four colors lets you get a little bit more out of it. Yeah. That's fantastic. Uh, now, uh, for today's brew on let's do a brew uh you have a theme that you play on the channel regularly that we wanted to talk about why don't you tell the audience a little bit about it sure so um this is one that we've done a couple of times i think probably three times at this point maybe four uh and it is add a color uh so this is one of the ones that i think people really enjoy that have watched the show and it's basically you just take any commander and then you can add one extra color to the commander's color identity and build around that color. So right. um, you're generally going to end up playing one, two, two color decks, uh, sometimes three, but once you start getting into I'm three and I'm adding a color to that, you're just kind of, eh, you know, at that point. Right. Um, so most of the time, I think the four of us have chosen uh, one to two color decks. I do know that there was one where um, I believe that Steven chose Kozilek or something like that and added in white or green or something like that. I can't remember which one he added in, but that one was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's a lot of fun. And um, my couple that I've done in the past that I remember are uh, I played Brutaclad and I added green into it so right. that you could get a lot of the extra token generation um, and a lot of the like parallel lives type effects. Uh, and then I also played uh, Azuri and added white and made it into a token deck. Right. Um, right. Because I thought that was kind of cool of like, hey, let's make something that really cares about these small creatures, these small power creatures, and let's add in the white and make it a traditional kind of traditional ish green white with blue uh, token based deck that yeah. gets value off the commander. So absolutely. Uh, and those those kind of things are fantastic. Uh, th those kind of deck building restrictions, the ones that you build in yourselves, like you mentioned, are the ones that a few months down the road, you see kind of picked up 
by wizards and introduced as official uh, f- official format staples. Yeah. I-, I know you've mentioned that with partners. That's yeah. a theme that you did. Uh, and then partners were released. Uh, yeah. And I can I can see that this add a color is done through partners in the future where maybe Wizards prints a card that's a partner with anything, uh, maybe a, a mono-colored creature that is partner with anything. Um, yeah. And those those kind of uh, of weird takes on the format, I know that you're, you're uh, fond of saying that you make your own rules on yep. the show. <laughs> uh, but to, to see them picked up and officially printed, uh, that must be a, a point of pride. Yeah. I think it's a lot of we just kind of come up with the same sorts of ideas that the people at Wizards do because we, obviously we know that there's there is a amount of time that it takes to develop these cards and decks and things of that nature. So we do know that like the uh, the the partners commanders we did that and then probably like five months later they introduced the first partner commanders and so we knew okay well that's been in the works for yeah like probably a year at that point if not more from the from the point of when we did our video right. they'd already been working on something like that for about a year or so so there's like obviously like it's just a great minds think like kind of situation Absolutely. rather than a oh they're going to take the theme that we used and make it into an official product so right, right. Uh, but yeah no so like I, I think it would be cool to see something like that i think partner with anything is probably a little too powerful but i'm sure that they can come up with a way to uh to to make it work yeah, because there are some crazy things that you can get up to just adding a single color into existing commanders. Yeah, uh, you, you've mentioned a few examples of them, but uh, for for today's brew, uh, did you have anything in mind? I, I know that you're fond of a few color pairings yourself. Uh, you tend towards uh, Simic most yep. often, I believe. Yep, I lean Simic and uh, usually just Simic with something i have my males from wanderer deck which is my my baby that i've been building for uh over a decade at this point um about a decade at this point uh that's my like you know foil artist proof all that and then i have my my zexara deck which is my synth or my uh salt eye deck uh villainous wealth deck and then i have um my bant one is uh hullen chulane yep. um and that one is one where it is like as most people said, it's a little degenerate. So uh, <laughs> I have decided to make it as degenerate as I can. And I'm not really a big fan of like CEDH because I've kind of stepped away from for quite some time away from like the competitive aspects of things. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't really like the super cutthroat uh, style of play that not that, you know, that's it's it, it's somebody's jam that it's somebody's jam. I don't really, you know, care if other people like to play it kind of thing. I definitely encourage people to play it. But um yeah, if somebody wants to sit down to a table and say, like, I want to play a slightly high-powered game, it's my, it's more of my level 9 deck than, right. than a, like, level 10. I'm not running infinite combos and, you know, Demonic Consultation, Thassa's Oracle, or whatever, you know, style uh, combos and things of that nature. But it's going to be degenerate, and it's going to win a little quicker than most of my other decks. But Yeah. Uh, for, so for today, I'm definitely fine if we want to pick... Uh, you know, a color combination like that. Um, uh, I didn't come in with anything in particular in mind, uh, but like I said, usually you want to do something that's like a mono color and add something to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so do you have a preference of, uh, let's say, between blue and green, if we were going to go Simic, which one should we start off with? Uh, well, I would definitely start with green. Uh, okay. I, I am a Golgari fan myself. Um, so uh, I... I Immediately when you brought up this theme, my mind went in two directions. Uh, they aren't the monocolor and add a color, but I went with uh, Golgari uh, plus red uh, for a for a Jund combination, helmed by one of my favorite and least played commanders, uh, Grismold the Dreadsower. Oh man, yeah. From C19. Um, he's the, the, uh, the, the guy who gives everybody plant tokens. Yep. Uh, and gets bigger when creature tokens die. Uh, and uh, playing off of the theme of giving everybody creatures and adding red to it, you can do a lot with cards like uh, Repercussions 
or uh, just the fact that you're making creature tokens at the end of every turn, you can add in impact tremors or yep. perforos, god of the forge, in order to get a little bit more extra mileage out of that and double up those tokens so that you're just getting value without swinging yeah. with your commander. For uh, sure. Th that's just one one of the ideas that came to mind. And then the other is with, uh, with Zaxara, one of your new ones, adding red to that, uh, because you get X spell tribal, you get a lot of the good X damage the, spells. The fireballs. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the fireballs, the earthquakes, uh, the comet storms, the, uh, the, the great things that uh, help get not only the Hydra tokens out of it, but the reach with the deck. So you can swing through with the, the Hydras. You can do the same kind of thing with uh, Impact Tremors or Perforos, where just about every spell you are casting is getting you a Hydra token, so you get a little bit of damage out of that, but you also get some direct damage in burn. But yeah. like you mentioned, adding too many colors to it, you just end up with, let's just include all of the good stuff in here. Yeah, yeah. You're very much close to that. Like, I like the idea of Grismold, so let's let's go with that. Okay. Like, I, I do like that idea a lot. Let's go with Grismold and then add red to make it Jun. Um, I definitely think there's some good stuff you can add in there. Um, like you said, uh, obviously something like uh, Perforos is mm -hmm. very easy to add. Um, Impact Tremors, actually, which yeah, is that's actually Perforos. Perforos is actually one of the ones that uh, we generally try to avoid just because that two extra damage uh, gets to be a little much. But yeah, Impact Tremors, um, even something like War Storm Surge, if mm -hmm. you can buff your creatures in some way. Is and definitely M21's new Terror of the Peaks is yeah. uh, another example yeah um yeah i think that that one could be very good you could definitely add a lot to it i know that the way that um because i designed or i i built a grismal deck for justin as part of a uh i think it was an episode where we did like a secret santa each of us built a deck that we think the person that we received as the the you know our gifty mm -hmm. um and built them one we thought they would like, so I built him a Grismold deck. And I do know that they generally run things where it actually wants to kill all the tokens, so it yes. runs um, uh, Illness in the Ranks and... Uh, virulent Plague. And virulent Plague and um, Pestilence. And there's the the new uh, Caravec that also can be added into that. Yes. Uh, so that's, that's another one that could be added pretty easily to that. Uh, but yeah, if we're... Um, if we're going with that, I think there's uh, a lot that you can add into this. Um, uh, Goblin Bombardment is another one. If you just if you don't get your uh, effects that can like wipe out all those tokens, mm -hmm. and then you can just start sacking them to do all that extra damage. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one of my personal favorites is uh, like I just add this to like almost every red deck that I play if I can. Sunbird's Invocation. Yes, it's yeah. just a wild, you know play a card, get something random. It's it's one of my favorites. Right, and when you're playing green in combination with red, it's pretty easy to get to the casting cost of Sunbird's Invocation, where even if you're playing a two or three casting cost spell, flipping another spell off of that is just the extra value to take you into the long game. Yeah, for sure. And this is the kind of deck that's going to want to include token doublers and counter doublers. Yep. Um, not only for yourself, but for your opponents, mm -hmm. uh, because Grismold does get plus one, plus one counters when any creature token any dies. creature token. Dies. So that means uh, something like Primal Vigor yep. is a, a big include, since that's twice as many plants at the end of every turn for everyone. Yeah, and Primal Vigor is definitely a good choice over something like, especially if you don't have something like a doubling season or uh, you know, any of those standard ones. So mm -hmm. I know that doubling season has been reprinted a couple times coming out in jumpstart again, but, uh, yeah, if, if primal vigors is obviously like good, uh, sort of budget version of that as well, since it affects everyone. Right. It, it's, uh, it's not so budget anymore. It's creeping is up it? there in price. Uh, I think it's up over 30 oh, wow. at, at this point, but I haven't uh, looked at the price of it in a while then. Yeah. Uh, and largely because it hasn't been reprinted again. But, yeah, that yeah. is, it was only printed the once, yeah. Yeah, uh, and people love those kind of effects. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I'm I'm a sucker for it, too. Uh, any kind of counter-doubling effect, whether it's symmetrical or not, uh, any kind of token doubler, I love when I start getting multiplicative with my decks with, <laughs> with multiple doublers in play. 
Uh, I've got a uh, Rishkar Pima Renegade plus one plus one counter tribal deck nice. that includes all of the doublers. So, so you end up with a Colonian Hydra and a doubling season and a Primal Vigor in play. And you just need to sit there and uh, stare at your board for a little bit and do the math as to how many counters <laughs> everything's getting. Yeah, for sure. Oh, man. Yeah, that's that's sweet. Yeah, yeah you can definitely add in um, because you you because we're going with red as well, you could definitely add in things like uh, the token makers in red. So you can add in like the Krinkos. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, there's both um, uh, Mob Boss and uh, uh, what's the other King, one? that uh, Tin Street Kingpin. Tin, tin, tin Street Kingpin, the one that when it attacks, you make the tokens equal to its power. Not uh, only that, you put a plus one plus one counter on mm -hmm. him and make tokens, which has extra synergy in a deck that wants to be doing that. Wants to have something with like a doubling season in it for sure. Perfect. Um, so yeah, you put you put those in there. Uh, you get all your extra creature tokens. Uh, you can put in, um, you know, your your uh, uh, siege game commander, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Uh, just anything that's going to make those extra couple of tokens and um, you could very easily put the uh, the three mana Chandra that's in uh, in standard now too, the one that makes the elemental creatures. The, because, the two elementals. Yeah, because uh, it makes the that, two elementals. They sack at the end of turn, so you get the bonus on the on your Grismal. Yeah, and, and you can look at uh, Varchild as well. The uh, the new Varchild out of Dominaria. Whenever it deals damage, the defending player creates survivor tokens, which I yeah. believe is Stevens. Yeah, token Steven's token, uh, but uh, but that's a great way to give your opponents tokens to later kill off with things like a virulent plague or an illness in the ranks to make Grismold even bigger. Yeah, for sure. Uh, there's also stuff like uh, that just recently came out. This is one I actually just put into my. Um, uh, I believe I put it into my Garna deck. Yeah, I put it in my Garna deck. I was thinking because I just picked up a bunch of cards for both my Garna deck and my uh, and my Obsidat deck. So the black cards are kind of squishing in my mind now. Of uh, but Bastion of Remembrance from Ikoria. Yes, makes a human also, when it comes into play and gives mm -hmm. you the uh, the aristocrat effect. Yeah, yep. so it's another just something dies, you you gain that extra life and uh, and take it away from somebody else. So there's definitely a lot of good options in here. I'm actually going to search now. I'm going to cheat a little bit because I'm <laughs> starting to uh, get it, towards the it's point. It's all good. Uh, and and that's, uh, that's one of the things that uh, is fantastic about deck building for Commander is that you don't have to do it on your own. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get the mindset, uh, I'm going to build this, I'm going to build it on my own, I'm going to do my best on my own. But there are so many resources available where you can see what other people are doing. And there's no shame in taking advice from others or input from others to build a deck. Believe me, it has been uh, a real, real big boon for somebody who has to make a deck once a week to have resources like Scryfall and EDA Trek available. Absolutely. It's, it, it went from, okay, this is going to take me pretty much a full day, like an eight hour, okay, I have to go through Gatherer and figure out what I want to add. And I have to remember this and remember that mm -hmm. to, okay, I can skim a couple other people's lists. I can uh, look at some options. I can look at the most popular things on the actual EDA Trek page. Mm -hmm. uh, they have all those, you know, lists available so you can skip through those as well but then you also have the ability to have all of that extra advanced option searches in scryfall right and, and just being able to recently go. added a, an art search too they they added that a while ago um and it was definitely a big big boon um it's actually called tagger.scryfall i think um so it's not through the main scryfall page you actually have to kind of like search it out uh through like a like google or something and just look up like scryfall tagger and yeah, they have people that have gone through and have just tagged like all these different pieces of art with, okay, there's, you know, um, a person who is got a sword, they've got a shield, they've got a breastplate, there's a female fighter, you know, like all these different tags on yes. just this one piece of art. So if you're looking specifically for, okay, I want one that's chair tribal, it's a huge, huge boon to something like that. And this we didn't community have that. never ceases to amaze me. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have that when we were making Chair Tribal and Ladies <laughs> Looking Left and Beard. So it's a huge, big uh, improvement. So 
I'll, I'll make sure to link it in the description below so that everybody can find it. Uh, it it's again, it amazes me that uh, we've got people that have gone back through decades of cards, tens of thousands of cards and done this just to benefit everyone else. Uh, it's one of the things that warms my heart about the magic community that you have people willing to do that. Yeah, it's it's super great. And I, I do greatly, greatly appreciate the work that these kinds of people are putting in to make sure that everybody has these kinds of resources equally. So great. Uh, so uh, back to back to the the deck. Um, we we mentioned some aristocrat style effects in Bastion of Remembrance, with as many creatures that we'll be creating and ideally having die, uh, having a decent aristocrat package in here with. Um, Blood Artist or Zulaport Cutthroat would help get some reach. But what would we say our, our primary line to win is? We, we know that Grismold's likely to get pretty big. We want to mm -hmm. try winning through combat damage. I know that that'd be an additional point on your scoring system <laughs> if you uh, kill someone kill with it, uh, commander damage. Kill, kill with the commander damage is always yeah an extra point. So yeah, um, you can definitely add in things like, uh, like your Rogue's Passage, like... Uh, um, uh, what's the cloak? Is it Mistform Cloak? No, uh, that's not Whisper it. Silk? Whisper cloak? Silk Cloak, yeah. Things that make it unblockable is mm -hmm. definitely a way that you can go with it. Um, like you said, the Aristocrat style, just uh, sacking and you know draining them and uh, gaining life is always a big plus. Um, you're going to find that obviously a lot in black. Um, uh, but yeah, you could also just sack things to, if we're adding red, um, another really big one that you could just, uh, sack all those tokens to is Throwmock. Yes. That's a, that's a really good, um, my, my friend, Chris, who goes by Throwmocking on, uh, on Twitter and, uh, and is on my stream quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's his, his baby deck. What my Maelstrom Wanderer is to me, that's to him. And he's, right. he's got the, uh, the, the foil addiction. So that's his, <laughs> his whole deck is, is foiled out as it can be. And. Uh, but yeah, Throwmock, I've seen that thing come in, uh, become really, really huge. And then it, you never forget a like, you know, 96, 96 Throwmock being flung at your face. Right. And it's just I, like fling. Gotcha. Yeah. And, and that yeah. that's a great thing to include, too. Uh, a little bit of the fling effects for mm -hmm. if uh, Grismold or something like a Throwmock gets really large yeah. to be able to throw them uh, and the the red options with fling itself come to mind but also golgari has an option in jared golgari lich lord uh who can pay three and sacrifice a creature to throw it at all of your opponents yeah right? yeah there's that um like i have in my rael deck as well uh if you don't want to actually sacrifice the creature if you want to keep it around if you want to keep like um grismold around or something like that uh, you do have other options in red as well. You have like Gravatic Punch. Mm -hmm. You have um, you have Soul's Fire. Uh, you have uh, there was another one that I'm forgetting. There's also the new one from M21 that doesn't fling, but if you can get in and they're like, oh, okay, well, it's only 12 commander damage. Or, you know, like I guess I'll just not block and then I'll take care of it on my turn. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the instant speed. It's one in a red double target creature's power. Yes. Until end of turn. And I just put that in my rail. Like I bought it immediately, put it in my rail deck. Absolutely. I, because you're, they're, they're just, they might just do that. They might just be like, well, it's only 11 or 12. Uh, I, I can probably take it. You're dead. Yeah. Well, Gr Grismold has trample baked in. So That's true even too. if they say, well, I'll, I'll block four so that I only take eight commander damage, you can then double that power so that you're getting through for the, the commander damage win. Yeah. And um, really, really build it up quick. Um, for this, I also highly suggest uh, this is one thing that um, like people will generally do, but will sometimes overlook is make sure you have your sack outlets in a deck like this. Um, one of my favorites is Spawning Pit. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one that I started using in Tashar pretty heavily. That was like a big part of it. It's uh, you know inexpensive. Mm -hmm. um, it can create those extra tokens, especially for this theme, uh, and it just isn't an, uh, an um, a free sack outlet because it doesn't cost you any extra mana or life or anything to actually sacrifice the creatures. So it's really, really good. It's cheap. It's colorless. It's, you know, an artifact. So it goes into any deck. Mm -hmm. um, highly, highly suggest that one in any sort of deck where you want to either be sacrificing things or you want things to die. So 
For sure. A, a fantastic suggestion. Uh, and I know that we uh, we touched on pestilence earlier as a <laughs> way to, to wipe the board. Red has its pestilence in Pyrohemia. Yep. That was uh, one I was definitely going to suggest. Pyrohemia, real good card. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it, so it, it sounds like we're making a lot of tokens, killing mm-hmm. off a lot of tokens, dealing damage when we're doing dealing with tokens. This uh, sounds like a deck that's right up my personal alley here with the amount of synergies that are going on. Uh, we'll want to include some ramp, of course. Mm-hmm. We're in green, so we can work with mana dorks, the birds of paradise, the elvish mystics, the land of war elves. Uh, we can also include a low end that includes a sack outlet like Viscerous here. Yep. Uh, so that we've got ways to kill off our plants while we're looking for the enchantments that are going to reduce the size of all creature tokens. Yep. Uh, there are other synergies like Beast Within, which is removal and interaction, but also creates a creature token, which mm-hmm. can make Grismal bigger when that creature token eventually dies too. So sounds like we've got a nice uh, ramp package a uh, nice utility package. We've got some sack outlets and we've got some big beefy creatures that can help us close out the game. Really sounds like we've got the frame for a good deck built around it. Yeah. Um, so there's two other big creatures I would suggest that work really well with this theme. Um, one is Prosh. Yes. Skyrider of Cure. Um, it's obviously not as good if you're only getting to cast it the once as opposed to a signature commander, but it does create a bunch of tokens and you can sack them to Prosh. Um, so it works out kind of okay. The other one, like I said, uh, Throwmock is a big one, uh, but also Dragon Broodmother is another really good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you, you mentioned Prosh. Uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention his cousin Corvold, Corvold in here yes. too. Yep. Um, enters the battlefield can sacrifice a plant token to get you a card and make Corval bigger uh, and he just functions as both a draw engine and a sack outlet yeah yep for sure yeah so yeah there's there's some pretty good stuff like a lot of the times when i'm playing in a green deck there is a you know selection of staple cards that i always like put into the deck list my i always do a, a theory deck list of you know here's like a hundred cards and then cut that down to mm-hmm. between 60 and 64. I generally go with 63 uh, almost every time, uh, but uh, that's where I aim for. And so there's things like you said, um, you know, your beast within, uh, cross and grips. Um, you want your ramps. So you've got your, like you said, creature based ramps so that you can sacrifice them because you can get your land war elves. You can get your, um, uh, what's the other one that does, that makes a black. Uh, the elf uh, um, elves of deep shadow deep shadow yes i knew it was a deep something so yeah deep shadow uh is another good one um things like that uh but you can also add in your uh you know your rampant growth your uh your uh cultivates and kadamas Kadam- reaches if you want um if a lot of people will also suggest going from uh two to four rather than putting in cultivates and kadamas reaches mm-hmm. which with a Commander that's at three. Yes, I would probably also suggest. Um, so you want to have your explosive vegetation, mm-hmm. and um, what's the other one that goes to get two forests? I'm blanking on the name all of a sudden. Uh, oh, um, I, I'm blanking on it as well. But yeah, I, I know that it's F. a newer one. Uh, no, or sorry, it's, it's, I, are, are you thinking uh, Sky Shroud Claim? Sky Shroud Claim. Yes, yes. Sky Shroud Claim mm-hmm. goes to get two forests, puts them into play. So um, that works out really well with this deck too, because you're playing the three colors. So you can go get your stomping ground and your um, uh, overgrown tomb as right. well. So things of that nature, right. pretty easily. Um, but yeah, so in a deck like this, where you're going to be pretty reliant on the three spot with cards like uh, your Grismold and uh, your your um, uh, your kingpin and things of that nature, mm-hmm. you might want to consider just going with the twos and the fours. Yes. Um, uh, your arcane signets um, uh, and things of that nature, any of your two drop uh, mana rocks as well. Yeah. You, uh, you, you want to be very heavy on your one casting cost mana dork so that you can hit Grismold on turn two. Yeah. Um, but, but that leads to an interesting question. You've got a point scoring system on commander versus. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you play a dork on turn one and you've got a three casting cost commander, 
Do you go for first blood or do you cast your commander? What's your choice? I generally go for first blood. Right. <laughs> just as the extra point, just as a, uh, I gotta, I gotta show you that I got this. <laughs> right, you know? right. So send um, the message. <laughs> yeah, because I can generally do something like get in for that one point of damage, play my land, and then do a two drop. Right. You know, and, and then the next turn, I can just play my, my commander on curve still. So perfect. Perfect. Uh, makes, makes total sense. Uh, yeah. If you're not, if you're not playing in the context of commander versus yes, <laughs> playing your one drop, playing your commander, something that you really care about getting into play as early as possible so that you can get the, all the benefits from creating those tokens and then starting to sack them later. Definitely a big thing. So for sure. I, I, I've seen many leagues in LGSs when people were playing together in stores, uh, pick up this kind of scoring system. Uh, it's another way that you've been an innovator on the format itself. It's also one of those where uh, a lot of people will take our list of points and use it. Um, but we actually took our list from uh, basically several different uh, resources. Huh? We we definitely wanted to limit like the... There was a lot of them that we've looked at that had things like no infinite kills, you know, no, mm -hmm. don't take infinite turns. And we were like, okay, well, we can already kind of say we're not doing that. And the way that we get around that is saying like, don't kill everybody in the same turn, right? You know, is, is one of our big ones. If you kill all the other players in the same turn, then that's the same as I'm going infinite, you know, right? Um, so you lose a point. So I'm yeah. glad that people are picking it up. Ours was built out of a desire to make our game as entertaining for watching as possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, sometimes it's not as entertaining for playing because uh, we do have a kind of soft ban list. Um, I think people know that things like Purpuros and uh, Cyclonic Rift are on it. And Cyclonic Rift is uh, a very good card to be playing if you want to, you know, make sure that you're like either clearing the board to like win the next turn or uh, to defensively like I'm going to die. So I got to play this Cyclonic Rift. And then everybody else resets and then maybe i can take somebody out mm -hmm. that person who was really really threatening i can take them out um i know that people have complained about psychonic rift and obviously that's a whole other discussion uh but things like that where it might just be very different for you playing in an lgs or playing with your play group if you're using that point system because ours is structured for viewing entertainment rather than playing right. entertainment Right. Uh, and I, I've seen lists take a lot of what you've got, like the point scoring lists in leagues take a lot of what you've got, but add things that are counterintuitive to fun play being penalized. Things like taking more than three turns in a row is penalized with a negative point. Yep. Again, killing the entire table in a single turn uh, isn't necessarily penalized if you can do it through something like combat damage, but if you do it through a combo, then hey, you've just ruined the fun of three other people. And yeah. for, for someone like yourself and your show, uh, you want to have a game that's going to last an hour long. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that you've had a few that have been relatively short, so you get multiple games in. Uh, are, are those typically coming as surprises? Uh, sometimes they can be. Uh, and sometimes it's just a, you know, sometimes you just got bad luck where one person just kind of like out of the game. Mm -hmm. You just... They, they drew really, really poorly. They are not really drawing into any other things that they need. And, uh, you know, one other person did like what their deck wants to do and goes off. And then uh, the person who's going to be like their counter kind of just can't do anything to stop them. So it's like, OK, well, I take out you and then I take out these other two people fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so that can happen. It, it's it's sometimes a surprise and sometimes it's just a, oh, okay, well, we look at the decks and go, I'm pretty sure that that person's just going to win. Like, I'm pretty sure Steven's just going to stomp us all because that deck looks ridiculous compared to everybody else's. Right, right. And sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. And it's good that you've got the dialogue with the rest of the guys about decks and you talk about them ahead of time and uh, you make sure that everybody's on relatively equal footing. Uh, a lot of people don't get that either with their personal play groups or when they play with random players at events. Uh, how important is it to you when you play on with people on stream that you talk about deck power levels in advance? Uh, just on my stream, personally, um, 
I play with people who I either have played with in the past or just kind of know for the most part. Um, so I'm playing with, like I said, Olivia Gobert Hicks. I know her decks can be degenerate, but she's also the kind of player who's like, I could kill everybody this turn, but I'm just going to mill myself out instead. <laughs> right. Like I'm taking like the moral victory kind of, yeah. and you guys can just keep playing because like I'm going to draw my whole deck and I could just like, you know, for her most recent, like uh, she just built an Atraxa enchantments deck on, on a recent episode. She was like, I could just draw my whole deck, play Opalescence and swing and kill you. But instead, I'm just going to pass and I have no cards in my deck. And she actually won by on her upkeep, tapping all of her creatures because she had Song of Raelis as well. Uh, <laughs> that was active. So she tapped all of her enchantments and sunk all of her mana into uh, Simic Ascendancy. Right. And just. <laughs> all uh, right. That's fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that that counts. You know, yeah. it's fine. So oh. that, that, we just kind of have fun like that. Um, and I also have had like uh, uh, Sheldon Menery on, you know, in the past. So. Mm -hmm. He usually likes the discussion of like, okay, you know, pool zero, what are we playing? Um, but other than that, um, yeah, if I'm if I'm playing in person, I usually ask people like, hey, what level are you playing at? Like, almost all of my personal decks are between like a five and uh, like low eight mm -hmm. at most. Like my Maelstrom Wanderer deck is pretty good, but like none of my decks really have my, my personal decks really have like really early infinite combos that I can go tutor out, or, you know, like very easily. Right. I'm not trying to play a nine and ten level deck a lot of the times. You are playing want the game. food chain and Maelstrom Wanderer. Right? Yeah, exactly. I'm not playing food chain. I'm not playing like uh, Kiki Jiki Pestermite. I'm not playing uh, any of the time walk effects. You know, I'm not playing infinite turns kind of thing. So I'm really just kind of I sit down and I'm like, okay, well, I, I am going to play my stupid Tashar deck that tries to do you know a six card combo mm -hmm. and can win on turn four, but it's really difficult. Right. You know, the longer I've played that deck, the more I realize like, oh, here's this other combination of cards that just kind of works. I have to draw into this, but sack that, do this, sack that. do. OK, now I can draw. I drawn into my, you know, my uh, 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 ether sphere, sphere uh, and I can just kill you all because I'm gaining a bunch of life. Right. Uh, so things like that. Um, but yeah, for the most part, uh, that that's a big difference between playing with a group that you've played with for a long time and playing with people either you've only known for a little, like a little less time or have never met before at an event or something like that is with those three guys with commander versus we don't really even have to discuss our decks very much anymore right we all kind of talk about like who what cre what like what uh commander are you playing and what's like your theme gonna be kind of sometimes mm -hmm. um and then we all know to make the right choices of like, okay, we should not include these cards. We should include this type of card. We know that we we want the game to be more at a six to seven power level a lot of the time. We want it to be an average typical game of Commander that's going to last between an hour to two at most. Um, and sometimes you do run away with it and sometimes everybody struggles and it takes two hours and 15 minutes to actually play a game. <laughs> right. Uh, and when, when you're playing with guys that you've played with for as long as you have, you know that if they're playing certain colors or they're going to trend towards certain colors, there's always going to be pet cards that mm -hmm. they're going to include. Steven's always going to have Lightning Bolt in the red deck, right? Yep. Justin's always going to run Grave Pact if he's playing black. Uh, what about you? Uh, aside from your, your favorite card, Villainous Wealth, is there a card that's in the colors in the deck that we we're talking about red green or black that you always include in a deck uh green i definitely like i said i have my list of staples that are just good stuff um uh for, between those three not really like one that i do uh try to play in several um it, uh any like several decks that have green in it is Rift Sweeper. Right. Uh, because I think that's one that um, Justin agrees with and he he definitely pushes the, uh, you know, the Church of Rift Sweeper here uh, <laughs> for the most part. But uh, it's a really good card to be able to play because you have so many people that are going to play stuff like Bajuka Bog, like, um, you know, just like exiling style effects mm -hmm. that you're like, okay, well, I really want that card that's an exile and here's Rift Sweeper. I'm going to go shuffle it back into my deck and I can play it again later. Right. Uh, but, and when, when you end up building decks around certain themes and around certain cards, the last thing that you want is that card that you've built around to get exiled and stuff. Exactly. So, yeah, if you're building around like a really big creature or, you know, like 
I, I'm playing a mono green deck and it's not really a Galta deck, but it's got Galta in it. And I really want to swing with that a lot and not kill with commander damage, but just a big beefy trampler dinosaur or whatever. Then yeah, Rift Sweeper is a really great way to be like, okay, well somebody pathed it or, or you know, um, you know, something like that and mm -hmm. got rid of it. So, okay, well now I can Rift Sweep, I can go get it back. So fantastic. Uh, and in your, your Villainous Wealth deck, have you ever had somebody like uh, Praetor's Grasp out Villainous Wealth or, you know, Gaunty Lord of Luxury off the top four? Uh, I don't think I've run into that quite yet where they've gaunty. I've had people like remove it from my deck with other stuff, but there are other ways to win in the deck. And when it was a Tasker deck, I was still playing cards that were like uh, Shield Rid and... Um, uh, Lord of the Void was one that I had in there for a long time mm -hmm. and took out a while ago. Um, and uh, so I had a lot of that stuff that was like, okay, well, these are just big beaters and have like good mechanics on them that can, you know, kind of bring the game more towards my side of the table if I need it to. Mm -hmm. uh, with Zaxara, I think it has enough uh, extra redundancy with all the, the Hydras now too. Yes. Um, and being able to play like Finale of Devastation yes. very easily in a deck like that. Um, really makes it so that it can stand on its own without Villainous Wealth. So it's trying to still be a Villainous Wealth deck, but it can definitely like still run the table without the card if I somehow don't get it or somebody takes it away from me. Fantastic, right? If it gets uh, if it gets countered and exiled, for mm -hmm. instance, right? You yeah. still have ways of of crushing the table with uh, yeah. with Hydra value. Without yeah, because de I've definitely had people like mill it and then another player bajuka bog it out I'm like yeah all right cool rift sweeper <laughs> like you know go tutor for rift sweeper play rift sweeper shuffle it back in now i can tutor for it again to make sure people aren't gonna exile it again if i don't need it to right um and i had uh i had like a dead eye navigator in there for a while just to pair with uh rift sweeper for a little bit so just like <laughs> all right well if you're gonna keep exiling it i'm gonna keep <laughs> yeah, getting it back like exactly uh, that's fantastic. Uh, and it's, it's along those same lines that I always advocate having a way to win in your deck that doesn't involve your commander. Mm -hmm. Because if your commander just becomes kill on site, then you, you are essentially starting with an extra card in hand by having your commander in the command zone. But if it starts costing an extra six to cast or eight to cast, uh, then it quickly becomes prohibitive. And if you've built your entire deck around the synergies of your commander alone, then you often are out of luck a lot of the time. Yeah, and that can happen. Um, and that's one of the things like uh, with that Rael deck, it is definitely built around Rael. And so it becomes difficult if Rael becomes stupid expensive. And there's not really a lot of other ways, but uh, I do try and include things like um, young pyromancer and stuff see mm -hmm. if i can you know play a bunch of spells in a row and then get in with tokens but it rarely happens uh, the, so. the chasm skulkers the two the yeah. imaginary friends right the ones mm -hmm. that get really big just incidentally yeah yeah so you've chasm got some skulkers in there for sure yeah. so uh and if not then i'm just gonna wheel myself out of the game <laughs> yeah right right uh, I, I i very nearly did that on stream <laughs> a few weeks ago uh, i i had doubled up uh Tolarian winds Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, an Alhamrit's Archive in play mm. and messed up my math <laughs> and realized that I was drawing 60 cards. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was a little much. <laughs> uh, excellent. So uh, so it, it looks like for Grismold with red added, we've got a great shell. Uh, mm -hmm. The only thing that we haven't talked about are lands for the deck just yet. Uh, I know that there are a few that really fit with the theme and can synergize really well things like uh high market or mm -hmm. uh, Frexian tower yeah uh, any that any that you had in mind uh not that i can think of with this deck because you do have the ability to um get something like a really big uh throw mock or something like that and i do know that like our creatures have trampled but again like you said if sometimes you they're only a you know like nine nine or an eight eight or something at this point um Keswick wolf run is another really good one for something Classic. like this because then you can just all right well it's eight but i'm gonna pump into it trample over you and just you know get going um like you said previously rogue's passage is always a good one when you're trying to get in with your commander uh and and beat in for sure mm -hmm. um I'm trying to think of other good like red 
black lands. Uh, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Yeah, no, I maybe something like a raging ravine, just because it gets a plus one plus one counter. I know that that's red green, but yeah. it does get a plus one plus one counter when it attacks, which plays into part of the themes that we've got in the deck too. Yeah, uh, might be a good include. Um, but in For terms sure. of of red black, I mean, we're we're playing black, so we'd want to include things like the tainted lands, uh, mm-hmm. tainted wood, tainted peak in these cases. Um, it, what's your opinion on running something like Urborg Cable Coffers in a three-color deck? Uh, in a three-color deck, it can be a little rough. Um, like it's it's definitely something I have in my Tasker deck, but that's or my Zexara deck now. But that's obviously just to get uh, the biggest villainous wealth I can. Uh, if we're not going to be sinking that mana into anything. Mm-hmm. There's not really a reason to use it unless you're just like, okay, I'm expecting to draw a bunch of cards and then I am going to, you know, just want to play multiple cards all in one turn. Yeah. Um, Off the top so of my head, I, I could see just a Pestilence Bomb. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If, if you're just trying to get like a bunch of, uh, a bunch of mana just to do something like, you know, put it into Pestilence. Um, I mean, if you were trying to dump into something that's like, uh, you know, play a bunch of creatures and then play like uh, Gary or something like that, then maybe. Right. But like, I don't know that that's where a deck like this really wants to go with tokens and everything else. So, um, so yeah, I don't necessarily think Herborg Cabal Coffers is necessary for a deck like this. And it's also one of those where, again, it is it can be a little cost prohibitive. Cabal Coffers has been going up steadily for mm-hmm. the last several years. Um. Yeah. yeah, I think that's fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. So I, I think that we've got a, a good means for a deck list. Uh, as soon as we're done here, uh, <laughs> we'll have a deck list posted at the end of this video and linked in the description. Uh, that's what we've come to with Grismold plus Red. Uh, I think that uh, that we've got uh, a good little brew on our hands here. Yep, awesome. I definitely think so. I think I think this could be a lot of fun. All right. Well, Jeremy, thank you very much for joining us today. I do appreciate you taking the time and speaking with us and doing a brew with us. Uh, Why don't you remind everybody where they can find you and how they can see more of you? Sure. Uh, So it's Wednesdays on the uh, Star City Games YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Star City Games is Commander Versus. We usually release that at about 1030 a.m. on the on the YouTube channel. It's also available on Star City Games at 11 a.m. with all the deck lists and everything. Uh, and then I am on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Jeremy Knoll, uh, Mondays and Saturdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, and uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Jeremy Knoll. Fantastic. Phenomenal. Thank you once again for joining us, Jeremy. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Yeah. Uh, let's take a look at our brew. And here we have it, folks, our Grismold plus Red deck list. We've got some interesting cards in here to take advantage of making creature tokens so that we can kill off creature tokens or so that we can get triggers when they enter the battlefield. Most notably, there is one infinite combo in here in Tooth and Claw plus any token doubler. That gets you infinite enters the battlefield and dies triggers to make infinite creature tokens to kill them off to make more creature tokens. If that's uh, if that's too competitive, then I'd recommend removing it. Otherwise, it's a very solid list, and I hope Jeremy plays it on Commander Versus. Best of luck, Jeremy. I want to once again thank Jeremy for joining us today. Deck lists can be found in the description, as well as links to where you can find Jeremy and his shows. Until next time, folks, good luck and have fun.